What's good, Joe? So we're making beer and tacos today. In this morning. It's 1.36 in the morning. All right, y'all, so, so the base flavor for the beer is the chilies, the dry chilies. And right here we have the guajillo chilies. And I think the fresh form of these is those uh, Anaheim peppers, the long, light green ones you see in the produce section. Um, it's like a, a, a mild heat to these. All of these smell just like raisins. Right, this one here is the ancho chili. These are um, dried poblano peppers. I remember picking these up as a kid. Didn't know what they were, but I knew they smelled like raisins. And uh, you have the chili diablo right here. And these are the ones that pack the heat. The small chilies are always the most spicy. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna uh, remove the stems and the seeds from all of these and then we're gonna put them in an oven, a 400 degree oven just for a few minutes until you can kind of smell them a little bit and they, they get a little crunchy. And then we're gonna, uh, we're gonna soak them in, in some, uh, some broth with, with the meat once we get it seared off. All right, uh, so. Got all these stems and the seeds out of the chilies. As you can see, it's quite a bit. Uh, but basically what you wanna do is, is split these joints down the middle and uh, just get um, all those seeds out and as much of the, uh, the ribs of the chilies out cause that's where the heat and, and uh, that bitterness is gonna come from. So you wanna get that out of there. Um, some people do keep the seeds in there. If you want to, you can, you know what I'm saying? Um, if you want to leave some more of that heat in there, but I like to be able to kind of control it myself, so I just go ahead and take them out. For the chili diablo, just kind of snap them in half and kind of roll them in between your index finger and your thumb to get those seeds out, because these are a little bit more, more brittle than the other ones. But uh, we got the oven preheated to 400. We're going to leave the chilies in there for maybe three, four minutes tops, just to kind of open up the flavor the chilies a little bit, but you don't want them to burn, so you gotta keep an eye on them. Keep your, not, your nose open. Okay, so now the uh, chilies are done, and they, they have gotten deeper in color because we roasted them for a little while. And as you can hear, they're drier. And if you smell them, they don't smell like raisins anymore. It's like a it's almost kind of a smoky aroma they have to them now. So, so we're gonna set these to the side and we're gonna sear off the beef. And then once the beef is seared off, we're gonna, we're gonna add the uh, onions and garlic and, and the rest of the spices and the chicken broth. And then these are gonna go in there and simmer with the beef. Okay, so for the rest of our aromatics, for the birria, we have uh, some fresh garlic. This is about two whole heads of garlic. Um, I had the small ones, so I did like two and a half heads. But if you get like a, like a medium sized uh, head of garlic, you know what I mean? You can use two. Okay, and we have some yellow onions. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna cut off the ends and we're gonna split them down the middle and then take off that that first layer of onion because usually it's a little bit leathery so you wanna wanna take that off because that's not gonna be good eating and then we're gonna um, we're gonna, we're gonna sear off the face of these these onions and uh, get some char on them just to kind of caramelize them and, and, and give them more flavor as well. Then we're gonna uh, we're gonna sear off the beef. I'm trying not 
trying to remember if there was uh, something else that I put in the pot the last time I made this. Outside of the onion, the garlic, the oregano, and the chilies. And I can't think of it. So that, that must be it. Alright, so we got a, um, a pan on uh, medium heat. I'm just going to add some olive oil. Just to coat the bottom of the pan. <coughs> get them down so go ahead and move it up to like medium high so you can get some deep color on it and we're only gonna try the face of them <clears throat> Decent amount of char there. I'm gonna give you some some good caramelized onion flavor. All right, so here's the beef portion of, of the dish. Um, you got the chuck roast right here. Um, you don't have to uh, use this many if you don't want to. I mean, if you're gonna be doing a party or feeding a large family, this will this will make uh, quite a bit. But if not, you can just kind of scale it down to one roast and uh, it'll make a pretty good amount as well. Um, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to season it with some sea salt. And we can go pretty heavy because these are thick pieces of meat. And uh, some fresh ground black pepper as well. And, uh, we're just gonna keep this seasoning basic on the meat before we sear it off because we're gonna get the uh, the rest of the flavor is gonna come from the uh, the chilies, the dried chilies, and the rest of the aromatics. We got um, fresh garlic, and uh, we're gonna char some yellow onion, and um, also we're gonna um, add some oregano. And I don't know what else, but we're gonna we're gonna get to that. But the basic seasoning to start off can be very simple. Just salt and pepper. You don't need all that razzle dazzle. When you're seasoning your meat. Kinda, kinda go high. That way you can get even coverage on the surface. And if you don't have a uh, sea salt, you can use kosher salt. Just try to use a, a, a fine salt. Don't use the coarse one. Things like this, I like to go ahead and season all sides of it because we're going to go ahead and sear as much of the surface area of this meat as possible. That way, we can get like maximum flavor in the tacos because the beef flavor of these tacos is like super crazy, it's like super beefy. So the, the more, 
the more of the meat that's brown, the deeper the beef flavor is going to be. And whoever tastes these tacos is really going to appreciate it. So, it takes a few more minutes to do that, but it's worth it in the end. And I was going to say, yo, if you don't have a, a, a coffee grinder or a spice grinder, please, please get one. Because it, it'll make your life so much easier and your spices will, uh, your ground spices will um, taste so much more fresher. You'll be able to uh, smell your food more with the fresh ground spices, you know? You can pick one up for like 20 bucks. And some might be even cheaper than that. We're definitely looking to getting a coffee grinder or a spice grinder. All right, we got our pan heated on medium high. We're gonna add the chuck roast. And we're gonna sear these off until they get a deep, deep crust on them. So we want maximum flavor on this meat. So just give it a few minutes, give it about three minutes and kind of peek on, on, on the underside and uh, you know, just make sure you're getting a golden brown first and then let it go a little bit past that. So now we're going to add our beef to the pot. And my tamale steamer right here. It's the biggest pot I got. We're going to go ahead and add the meat and the charred onions. Fresh garlic in there. Chilies. And some unsalted chicken stock. We're gonna cover the rest with some fresh water and we're gonna bring it up to a bowl, reduce it to a simmer, and let it cook low and slow for like three to five hours, just depending, until the meat is tender. Fresh water. Oh, and the oregano, can't forget the oregano. Lots of oregano. And when you seasoning this, honestly, it's the taste, because, you know, once the meat is done cooking and we remove the uh, aromatics and we blend them up, we're gonna to have to taste the sauce for seasoning anyway. So, um, you know, just do it, do it to your liking outside of the salt. But we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do the salt and stuff towards the end. But everything else, you know what I'm saying? You can kind of be a little liberal with it. Y'all in three to five hours. I forgot I had some uh, some pickled beets I've been working on. But yeah, I've been pickling these beets for the last two or three days. I got some garlic and some ginger in here, some parsley, um, some vinegar, water, salt, and some sugar and black peppercorn. 
feel like they turn it out pretty pretty cool. Flavor wise, they still gotta develop though. I like the uh, the crunch to them. The brine got a nice flavor to it. Yesterday, I thought I was picking up a uh, a piece of uh, beet, and it was ginger. It was hella spicy, but it was good. I'm gonna let these keep going. See if I can maybe add something else to it. Maybe another herb like tarragon or something. <clears throat> All right, y'all. Uh, so it's the next morning. Well, it's daylight anyway, and uh, the meat is done. I actually set my alarm for um, two hours, and the um, the meat was actually pretty tender in that in that amount of time. So just kind of keep an eye on it and check it it may not need that that long i think the first time i made it it did just because uh it took a while for the pot to heat up but we're going to take the meat out of the pot and uh we're going to uh break it up a little bit and then we're going to take all the aromatics and stuff out put it in the blender so we can uh start to build the sauce all right, y'all, so here's the meat removed from the pot. As you can see, it's full apart tender. So you can do this with your hands if it's cool enough. Uh, but if not, just use two forks and it, it should break apart pretty easily. And, uh, when you, when you pull apart the meat like this, it really like increases the volume, so you can make a gang of tacos with this. So I'm gonna keep breaking this up, and then uh, we're gonna blend up the sauce. All right, so we got all the uh, chilies, onions, garlic inside of the uh, blender. What we're gonna do is, Add some of the cooking liquid to it so it can kind of thin it out. Release it in the blender. Okay, so it's looking like it's a pretty good consistency. Good enough to pour, it's not too thin. I'm just gonna put this over the meat and then put it back in the pot. Blend all that up, you see how how deep and rich that color is. And I almost taste when you're looking at it. Alright. So we're gonna put this back in the pot and we're gonna uh, let it let it simmer so the uh, so the sauce can get into the meat and then we're gonna season it to taste. And we're gonna hit it with some more oregano. And to me personally, birria needs some acid and some sugar. So we're gonna put some vinegar in there. And some sugar. And we're gonna do this little by little and we're gonna keep tasting it until it gets to a point where we're happy with it. But vinegar and sugar, most definitely in this because it's, it's a really rich meat and then with the spiciness of the chilies that's in there, you're going to need that to kind of balance it out. So we're going to mix it up and give it a taste and might be ready to make some tacos. Alright, so 
This is the finished product. Beef birria. Once you get to this point, it's really just kind of um, tasting your way through until you get it the way you want it, flavor-wise. Um, I suggest that you uh, let, it, let it kind of cool down to room temperature, you know, before you start building tacos and stuff. Just so it's a little bit easier to work with. And it won't make the tortillas all soggy. Oh, and I forgot to say, um, when it comes to the, the beef, beef uh, consomme that you dip it in, you want to pretty much do the same thing you did with the meat when you season it. You want to um, hit it with some more salt and pepper, some sugar, some vinegar, oregano, and then just kind of keep tweaking it until it, until it gets to uh, the flavor you want. You pretty much um, gonna be like kind of like you know some soup you wouldn't wouldn't uh, wouldn't mind having a bowl of you know what I'm saying without all the extra vegetables and stuff. But it's a real flavorful broth. You know what I'm saying? Tweak it to your liking and uh, dip the hell out of some tacos. I'm frying up some tostones too to go with it. Um, we do got a uh, a recipe for this. I think it's the fried chicken recipe. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna put a link up in the joint. Y'all check that out though. I did these with the uh, tortilla press, so I got them a little thinner, a little crispier. The ones I did in the chicken video is by hand, so they they kind of got like more of a french fry texture. So, we got these joints on medium heat crisping up. And we're gonna fold them over while the tortilla is still pliable. All you need is a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of the pan so your tortillas uh, won't stick and also so they can get that golden brown on the outside and um, go ahead and layer up the meat put the cheese down first then put the meat put some onion cilantro and I like to put a little bit of uh, Mexican hot sauce on top of that before I fold them over and it's a done deal